getting a little bit dark, so it's time to wrap this up soon, but I was just talking about levels of altitude mentioned by Ken Wilber, and that made me think of how mania, in a way, is a level of altitude. It gets us in touch with an extreme level of altitude that we have access to but have never touched upon before. In a way, that's what harvest your mania is, and I even thought of better terminology, which is really harvest your experience, or harvest your blueprint, or harvest your download, or harvest your altered states, or whatever, but really harvest your altitude, or harvest your mania, shows us what lines we need to develop, what lines of intelligence, whether it's our social intelligence, or our moral intelligence, or maybe even just this map consciousness intelligence overall, which is actually multi-dimensional intelligence. And there's probably lines of intelligence that we don't even know about. And maybe one of the lines of intelligence is this creative intelligence or this intelligence of dialogue with oneself or unfolding one's own understanding in order to prime the nervous system to then be able to receive those in the form of people, things, and ideas in, in reality. So can we have a creational attitude and that can be our altitude. So really we get a taste of our altitude in so-called mania or map consciousness, but then we need to develop them. So it's really a gift and we can really look at that and see what areas do we need to develop? What areas did we fail at? And it could be as simple as just not having a couple of lines of intelligence developed. So we have an overdeveloped intellect and an overdeveloped ego, but our emotional intelligence and our social intelligence is sort of underdeveloped, and a lot of it is sort of overcompensated for by our intellect and ego structures, and we relate in that way. So those other lines are quite underdeveloped. So when we lose our ego structure that is sort of the mediator of our intellect, we're sort of bobbling around without that intelligence, but really it's trying to bring intelligences into balance. So through my process after map consciousness and going through the mental health system, I think I actually developed my moral and social intelligence quite a bit more than it was before. And maybe that's kind of what the process does in a way is to learn that, but it's hard to learn that through the mental health system sometimes but I managed to do that to some extent. And then hopefully by having the medications to sort of slow the process down so that I can learn those things, now being off the medication, it's still in my nervous system, all those lines of intelligence I was able to develop. So then, so then when I'm off the meds, those can still operate. So there's maybe a nutritional line of development. I wonder if there's sort of like a financial business sharing line of development that I need to develop. And he mentioned how slavery disappeared from 1770 to 1870. And I really want to abolish psychological slavery in say the next 20 years. Slavery to the mental health system or even people who don't go through that, they're sort of slaves to their ego. And in a way, we've become slaves to the science that freed us from those mythic levels that Ken Wilber talks about. I feel like superhumans have magic and science, and it's integrated. Maybe we understand more the magic of our own nervous system. And really, those lines of development are in our nervous system. And I think one of the lines of development is sort of having a sensitive nervous system that when seeing something that makes the nervous system go weak, it goes weak because there's no rational structure as much to rationalize these things away. It's really felt in the mirror neurons and empathetically it's really felt in the body and if one would feel these things all the time one would move away from that and not participate in allowing that to continue at least in one's own world and as that's eliminated from people's worlds it's eliminated from the world. So maybe it's a matter of just moving towards that which makes the nervous system strong. And that's why I fear a little bit trying to do anything in the mental health system because 
seeing what's happening really makes my nervous system weak and I'm starting to feel like the strength of one's nervous system is of primary importance. So we shouldn't necessarily use the aspects of science to enslave us from developing further. And really we are scientists by, by understanding how a nervous system goes strong and goes weak. And Dr. David Hawkins really did a ton of work around this and has many great books. But the thing is that one can utilize that that understanding just to be aware of it in one's life, what makes one's nervous system go weak and what makes it go strong, whether it's people, places, ideas, things like the news, etc. And everyone's view is real when we're each creating our view. And can we share our views to co-create views and not believe? And maybe map consciousness actually crushes certain lines of development that are overdeveloped or that we don't even really need so much anymore if we're able to bring on line some of these other lines of development. So for example, if one is able to bring on this dialogical line of development or insights, having insights just by looking at something which is really guyological, then maybe we don't really need so much intellect. So it could be possible that the intellect sort of has to scramble and fail somewhat in order for the dialogical aspect to come online. And when it does and it's fully integrated, we don't really need so much that intellectual thing because the intellect might actually be a small part of insight and dialogue. And there's a line of development that is intelligence beyond the ego. So the ego sort of needs to crumble in order for that to come online. And then recovery works so hard to get people's egos back intact, but if we're able to create this new line of development, these new lines of development that Ken Wilber says we don't even know what that's going to look like, well, we have to give it time to flower and for our brains to understand and have discoveries if we're going to allow it to develop. Otherwise, we just try and squash it back into the ego. And that's why I don't really agree with Dr. Daniel Siegel when he says, oh, people who have mental illnesses have trouble with this and that and these structures aren't integrating, I think they're disintegrating for a reason. And there are other faculties that could come online that would actually render those other structures just like vestigial structures in the brain, no longer needed. Because again, we're always assuming that we know what human beings are supposed to look like and operate as, and we really don't. If we think that we know, Look at what's created in the world as a result of this operating system that most of us have. And that paints the picture because the world is a combination of what is happening and how everyone is operating. So I feel like in map consciousness, so many lines of development atrophy to give us a chance to really explore and understand and develop ourselves from scratch. And most of us would not want to do that. And Perhaps it wouldn't be so scary if there was a safe framework and a safe territory to explore in that way. So maybe there are quantum trajectories that we can experience. Maybe one day we won't really even have lines of development. We'll just be so in touch with the moment and we can just be moved so fluidly by the moment as the moment that we'll never even have time to stop and think, Oh, am I developing? We'll just be in such flow. Who's going to develop? Where's this accumulation happening of development or even some kind of subjectivity to come in and reflect on how one has improved in time? And I feel that can only happen when more of us are actually fluid because some of the improvements, the so-called improvements that we might be measuring ourselves by are in reference to what society looks like or what most people operate by, or also how we used to be. But when people just aren't really that way, we might not really think in terms of those kind of measures. I'm not sure. There's a difference between practice and just being so clear and observant and pliable to the moment, as Krishnamurti might say. So really it's just a prior stage that I was medicated and now I've moved beyond that, at least for now. We'll see how long that lasts. 
hopefully indefinitely. And he said something about make that force work in you and for you. And I feel like that's exactly what I'm doing with self-dialogue. It makes that force work in me and for me. And it's something that I can do in myself, with myself, for myself. And it's not dependent on much else. And he said, activate your full spectrum potential. I think map consciousness gives us a good hint of this. And he says, we can't know how to increase our skills if we don't know what they are. But I think we who go into map consciousness have a little bit of an advantage because we actually do know what some of our skills are. So if we go back and harvest our map consciousness, we can actually think about the skills and the intelligences that we had a hint of that were interesting and move towards developing them stepwise. And he talked about intelligences we have that we aren't using. And I think that's what map consciousness shows us. It shows us that we have a lot of intelligences that we aren't using. And then they come online and we try to use them. And maybe that's part of the problem or the trouble is that that first state of map consciousness is really just to show us some of our intelligences but not necessarily for us to try to use them because we actually don't know how to use them. That's something that we can do stepwise when the state ends. And maybe it will end more gracefully if we don't try to use those powers or those intelligences. Because the trouble is the ego is still really mixed in there and it can use it for its own devices and that's probably what causes a lot of the crash. And I feel like I need to awaken these and maybe some of my gifts and talents are these ideas and seeing. And maybe it's a downfall to actually attempt to try to get other people to see it. Maybe just keep seeing it and going with it. Or maybe I do need others to see it. I think what my downfall is and the crash really is, is just working in a framework that is against my nervous system. And that's an area that sabotages it because it really hurts my nervous system to see what's happening to people, especially when in my heart I have such a different framework that would unfold something differently. But first I need to unfold it for myself. And he said, states plug us into the original creative force, profound experiences of meaning and purpose. And that's exactly what map consciousness does. It is that original creative force and we become very, very creative. So really, it's not that, oh, people with bipolar are creative. It's the original creative force that we all have. And I missed number three. And all of this was on a link, superhumans.net backslash book. And number four was activating the innate capacities in your innate typology. So this can kind of be a fun game to really understand our gifts and our capacities and our lines of development and things instead of seeking for something to fix us, actually unfolding ourselves and creating ourselves. And I've always said, even in my talks to people, when I was sharing my story, that I think of recovery as rediscovery and recreation of oneself. And I still do. I think of it more as rediscovery and recreation of oneself, not recovery. Because recovery implies getting something back or getting back to some level of functionality when I feel that we can be completely different. There's nothing to recover. Why recover something that wasn't working when what might flower in its place if we move towards understanding and are curious and wonder might be something completely different. Like, I don't even know what that is. And Ken Wilber talks about the I space, the it space, the we space, which is something about the we space is something about the interior of the collective. And I feel like this is what I work on a little bit in self-dialogue because this is something that is sort of collective in a way or it could change the interior of people who have had some of these experiences. But right now it's just in my I space but it does move out to the we space because I do talk to people and things that I talk about do come up and I'm actually wondering if when I go home I'll want to share things but I've been more open to sharing some context I've created 
here in a different environment. So if I go home in a new environment, but I'm sharing in exactly the same way with new people, but sort of just going about the way I was always sharing here, it could create some dissonance. So I have to be careful about that. I have to be gentle with the context that I share when I go home because I'm in a new environment with new people. People that I already know, but if I'm acting in different ways or new ways, it could be interesting. So I wonder if there's a way to bring that up in things to say when I go home. Something about, I feel like I've really changed since I've gone. I've participated in a lot of dialogues and I've learned to communicate in new ways. And Ken Wilber talks about how all these dimensions are real and they change the way the world looks. And all of these dimensions have something to say. The I space, the it space, the we space, the it space. And I feel like all consciousness has something to say, not just these dimensions. But so to be unaware of the dimensions would have us be pushed around by them. So I need to be aware of the interiors of others who have this sort of pathologizing perspective. So I feel like we can understand, play, and master. So he's saying that we need to have all those perspectives, and if we don't, we either have those perspectives or they have you, and that these perspectives are psychoactive, and that once we understand a few basics, it can be really helpful. I really feel there's more than four categories. I feel like there's infinite categories and infinite richness, and we can really speak and have the perspective of anything. And I guess they probably all fall within these four categories, but to just really think, oh, this goes into this category and this goes into that category, we might miss some richness there. And Ken Wilber talks about subtle bodies and causal bodies, and I feel like I understand more the causal body in a way. I didn't really know what that was about. And I feel like self-dialogue actually operates on the subtle bodies and the causal bodies. Like right now I'm creating through self-dialogue and I've talked myself into considering superhumanity, which is sort of a subtle and causal thing. I think it's pretty hard to consider one's superhumanity when one's on medications because one's just going to have that framework of pathology. And I actually remember feeling hypermoral in my first experience of so-called mania and it was like all the intellectual reasoning away of things got disengaged and I really sensed a morality that was different than the one that we get programmed with. And that was a lot for today, but sometimes I feel like talking to myself is the only thing I can do. Maybe I don't know how to communicate with other people so much anymore. And tonight is the first night that I won't take any Benadryl whatsoever and I will likely fall asleep without a problem. I have had week-long PMS from hell and I still haven't got my period so it's good to know because when I get home it will be sort of the same time a month and I'll really need to watch out because I don't want to have that mixed in. It will be mixed in but I'll just have to be extra careful.